You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Successful Screenwriter Podcast, where we discuss anything and everything screenwriting. Here we interview successful screenwriters and filmmakers to find out just what it takes to make it in the industry. Just a heads up, this episode is brought to you by my book, The Guide for Every Screenwriter, which has been listed as one of the best screenwriting books of all time by the Book Authority. If you're looking for something that reveals the secrets of screenwriting in an easy to understand and engaging way, then this is the book for you. You can find The Guide for Every Screenwriter at thesuccessfulscreenwriter.com slash books now. On to the show. Welcome to the podcast. I have on an awesome returning guest today, Philip Eisner. He and Greg Hurwitz wrote a film that ended up on Netflix and was number one, starring Jason Momoa called Sweet Girl. Thanks for being on with us. I'm very glad to be back. Ah, so great. So, I mean, you kind of gave me a little bit of a hint that this was going to happen the last time you were on the show. And now I got to watch the movie. It was awesome. I'm not surprised that it hit number one on Netflix. Now, I know that this was a brainchild of you and Greg. So if you can give me a little bit of a history of how this script came to be. All right. So, so originally I was kicking around this idea and I really wanted to have, um, because one of the things that always struck me, and this is something that I, I think has been building over time, is that that when you look at criminal law, um, uh, you know, you murder somebody, you've broken the law, you get caught, you go to jail. Yeah. When you murder a town, um, you uh, the the worst case scenario that could possibly happen is you get a golden parachute. Yeah, and you look at this really sort of it came out of the uh, it came out of the crash of 2008 when there's all okay. these people and we have congressional hearings and all this stuff and no one freaking goes to jail. Yeah, big bailout stuff. Right, exactly. And, it, it you know, it's just this thing of infuriating, you know, it is actually infuriating and people go well, like, well, I didn't like it's not like I murdered anybody. It's like, no, you just created economic situations across the country. Yeah that forced that that led to drug addiction murder yeah uh, assault go down the list you decade made, decade of poverty right you made the world a substantially worse place yeah i would have had more respect for you if you'd murdered somebody wow you know yeah it's like why did you murder them um he called my, you know, he said something bad about my mom. I'm like, that's completely ridiculous and overreacted, but at least I understand it. Right. You didn't do it for money. It wasn't dispassionate. Yeah. Right. That came from my own little thing of respecting murderers and having <laughs> billionaires. You know, so I came up with a story, um, wrote a first act of it. And Greg and I are, are, are we go back, we're friends. We, and uh, we read, read each other's work. Okay. Uh, we're early readers and uh, really just his judgment. And I, I brought it to him. He loved the first act. And then he saw I was going with it. And he's like, dude, this is so dark. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, the last thing you need is another brilliant writing sample that's too dark for anyone to ever make a movie. Where and were I'm you like, going with it? Were you going like in, in like a saw direction? Were you going in like like a torture type of a direction or yeah, it was, it was it was it was it was it was it was the whole thing was the guy was going around and sort of going after um, rich, you know. And again, it wasn't just because they were rich, but they were rich and had gotten away with some. Do, they had done something bad that was not illegal. Okay. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. Okay. It's not illegal to raise prices on insulin. If here's a drug that's been around forever, yeah, it used to cost nothing, and now suddenly you're raising prices on insulin on diabetics. Yeah. Seriously. Well, I carry so. I carry an EpiPen, and my EpiPen, because uh, I, I have some some pretty bad allergies, so I carry an, an EpiPen. And originally it was, oh, I want to say it was like 40 bucks. It's not too bad. 
you know, and then they raised the price to like $500 at one point. I was like, this is insane. And, and there's people that couldn't carry their EpiPens, you know, and I mean, I, it's, 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 it's crazy that these things can happen, but all right. So you use that as in, as right. influence for right. this uh, big and, and pharma. You can still, and you can even he, still hear the emotions. Like that was what was driving this character. Yeah. And he's, and he's bringing his daughter along on the revenge spree. <laughs> and my, tw my twist was, it's like that the detectives following him is like, there's this guy, but there's, you know, there's something weird in all these videos. There's something in the corner. Yeah, right. And it's this, this still little girl. Yeah. But she's very still. And then you finally realize, you know, cause every time you're with, with the guy who's doing it, it's, it's, um, you know, he's talking with his daughter and they're interacting yeah. and everything. And then you realize, no, 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 he's carrying around a mummified corpse of his daughter. He dug his daughter up and. Oh, wow. And Greg was just like, no too far no he's like do you really want to you really want to make mandy and i'm like <laughs> i love mandy and he's like yes mandy's a fantastic film mandy is also a cult movie yeah that was made for a price well mandy mandy works too because it's a drug trip so it, it kind of works in mandy that genre works because, mandy works because it's magnificent but <laughs> I love Mandy. I, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. But yes, it is not. Um, Mandy is not conventional. So, you know, it is it is not. You're just into a chainsaw chainsaw fight. Right. You, you're, <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're not Mandy. For those of you watching at home, Mandy is not made for people who have a conventional sense. <laughs> and I apologize for the. Uh, they're listening in. That's big pharma right there. Then, uh, yeah, that's right. That's that's the surveillance <laughs> plane. Anyway, all right. So um, he so he gave you notes on it to to not so have he, that and take into a different direction. Right. So he gave me notes and he really broke the story. Came up with the new twist. And then I was like, wow, that's really great. But I know me, and I'll start writing. And and, and he wasn't like, oh, I want to write it with you. He was like, you know, we're friends. He gives me notes. He's like, do what you want. And I'm like, you want to write this with me? because I know me and I'll start following his notes, but I will turn back around towards my far more, you know, the next thing you know, they're in space and people are tearing their eyes out and God knows what else will happen. And, uh, and I'm like, and Greg is really steep. First of all, he's a brilliant writer, but he, he understands the conventions of the thriller like like we we actually have a very similar style you know you know our venn diagram overlaps enough that we can we work together very well our styles that's awesome, that's awesome. but i'm very much steeped in horror yeah and science fiction right and action and he's steeped very much in action and thrillers in science fiction and he's got much more of a feeling of this is how you craft a thriller. So you had to give up a little bit of a creative every, control. Oh yeah, we okay. Well, we're collaborating. That's but awesome. a lot of it. Well, I wouldn't say it's it's so much creative control, but it's sort of like I know that I don't have the instinct to write a thriller the way Greg does. Yeah, I know that if I take his notes and I execute, you know, and I and I follow like the map that he laid out, which I thought was great. I'm going to end up still swinging around to a horror movie. Just because that's, that, that's where you go. That's my muscle. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And so I said, you want to write it with me? And he was like, and then he it was like, it was like a kid in the candy store. He's like, we're at lunch. We're at this pizza that's place. He's just so like awesome. bouncing in his chair. And he's like, ah, I was hoping you'd say that. That's and then great. he started like really going, because this is, this would be really cool. And so we just started, you know, I'd do a 20 page chunk, throw it at him. He'd rewrite it and then go 20 pages further. And then I'd go back and I'd rewrite. rewrite oh, that's his, a rewrite cool and process. And we would just go back and forth. And, and what would happen is literally by the, by the time we were done, we we're sitting there going like, wow, that, and it's nice when you can and do it this. it was fun, right? Oh yeah, it was fun. But we're also yeah. going like, that's a really good line. And, so, and he'd be like, yeah, of course you like that line. You wrote that line. I'm like, 
Greg, I didn't write that line. That that's your like we literally. Oh, you hit that said Patty Co moment where you were couldn't even you were so in tune you didn't know who was what. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, we, we don't know who wrote which. That's wonderful. Um, so it was you know it was it was really great and uh, you know then we we gave it to uh, we gave it to uh, Greg's agent. Greg's agent gave it to send it out to. 20 producers and wow. nine, and 19 passed are you serious and 19 passed and jeff fearson that's amazing called us and was like this is brilliant i get it i want to do it <laughs> and i know who should do it and i'm having dinner with him on friday and i want to pitch it to him that's so great and we're like yeah no, of course we didn't say yeah. What we said was, well, I don't know, Jeff. We have to, we're still out with some other producers. We don't know if we can just, you know, yeah. Whatever. No, it's like, it's like, yeah. But I think and, that's um, so important. That's so important for the for people listening to hear this, like yeah, Philip Eisner, Greg Hurwitz, both established screenwriters, know what they're doing with hits under their belts, sent a script out to 20 producers, and 19 of them still passed if that doesn't tell you how hard it is to get something going in the industry right there i don't yeah. know what will yeah it is it is a it is a thing and 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 also and i, and I want to be very honest i'm incredibly proud of our script i think it absolutely kicked the film did not sell because of our kick script yeah the film sold because Jeff Fearson at dinner pitched our script to Jason Momoa, who said, I want to read this, awesome. read it, slapped his hand on the table, which I saw him do, and said, <laughs> we're gonna do this. That's awesome. And Netflix bought a Jason Momoa movie. Right. Because let's, let's be honest, he's coming off of Aquaman, Jason could have walked in with, you know what I really love? The comic strip, Kathy. And I actually <laughs> want to play Kathy. And I want to be, I want to walk around going Ack! in a dress. I want and to see that, first of all. Jason could do it. I think he's, he's, he's a really talented guy. All right, so, so he got this, this movie made, but it, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it speaks volumes. He's fantastic in the part. He has that heart right? to it. There's, right? a, there's a scene after his wife, after his wife passes from cancer because the uh the big pharma bro uh uh pushed uh on the uh, the meds so that she wasn't able to afford them because uh he wouldn't allow the generics to get on the market so right. so she she passes and then you know most movies they would show him hold her hand as she passed or something like that you guys had already built up the relationship early on in the script there was a quick call back there where he says, you know, I'm looking at you, woman. And I'm just like, oh my God, if that is in any kind of relationship where you have those little snippets where you say to each other. And then what does he do? He just leaves the room and he walks down a hallway and he can't find a hallway that's clear because he's too much of a man, right? Too strong of a man to show any emotion. But then he hits a point in the middle of a hallway where he can't hold it anymore, collapses, collapses in a hallway and then lets out that wailing of misery. And I mean, that is an absolutely amazing place to watch him go there as an actor because you haven't seen Jason Momoa go there and he can. I'm glad that the world finally gets to see that like, yes, he is one of the most eminently likable people working in Hollywood. He can go be on that tough guy exterior though. And that's what is awesome. And then that, that, that exactly. script allowed him to do that, which is why I bet you he wanted to get on board with it. Jason is an actor. Yeah. Jason's an actor. Jason has range. Jason can do what, you know, he can embody, he can embody different roles. It's he's awesome. not just, you know, he's not a one trick pony at all. No, not at all. And so yeah, it was, and, and, and also to give credit where credit's due, that really is is you know a performance on his part you know having that you know just the the agitation in yeah. his walk yeah he's moving and and 
I just think Brian did a magnificent job knowing how to set up that frame. Yeah, knowing... setting that shot up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and also create, it's, it's a weird thing. This is like, again, it, it's a, it's, this isn't a writing thing, it's a directing thing. But knowing that you're going to have a physical performance. So the frame, it's like shooting dance. You, have, oh, you need yeah. a wide frame. Yeah. Because in a close frame, you're, you're missing this. In close frame, everything's on the face. But if yeah. you want to see the agitation through the shoulders, yeah. through his breathing, yeah. in like the, the, the almost stagger walk, you've got to have it wide. Yeah. And, um, and, and they take it in and it's just, it's a beautiful performance. So, so from there, you know, we have the big pharma, which is, which is great. We, we have, you know, the, uh, manipulating, uh, uh, paying off people right. so that the generics can't happen. We have all of that. Um, we have the, the revenge and the thriller aspect of it, which is, which is fantastic. Um, but you got me on the twist. And there is a there's are we a saying spoiler alert now. I I, I don't want to I don't want to go spoiler. All right, but what I want to okay. ask what I want to ask you is, was that twist in there from the beginning, or was this something that organically developed? That, that was Greg's. That was okay. Greg's idea. That was the thing that Greg pitched me, where I was like, "That's so awesome!" Ah, oh, you know, it's like, yeah. dude, that totally works. Yeah, I was, that's really was good. great. All right, because yeah, because yeah. twists you need a good twist in a film. You want to take a, a film or a script in a direction where people don't expect it, and that keeps them energized and keeps energy in the script itself. And when that twist shows up, please go watch this movie. You have to see this twist. Um, you won't regret it because you're not going to see it coming. And then at the end, you're like, "Oh my god!" So I just I thought that was brilliant. But thematically, what you guys play around with is loss, and I love that. Yeah. And that plays out through the father and the daughter and how they experience loss in different ways. I think so much of it always falls back to, to, to cast and uh, Jason does a great job. And, and, um, and the young woman playing, Isabel, playing the daughter was so good. Isabel is going to have a, a long successful career with statues. I mean, she can, she can hold a scene next to Jason Momoa, there's a scene in the car where he's telling her to get out of the car and she doesn't want to get out of the car. Um, and there's just this silence there. And you let him sit with the fact that she's a teenage girl who's not going to listen to her dad. Yeah. And, and they say, oh, fine. And then they drive away and I was like, yes, any parent has lived that moment. She's a force. I remember, you know, it was interesting. I actually saw uh, Day of the Soldado Okay. with greg and we were watching it going like oh she's going to be a huge star oh that's she's awesome. going to be huge and then you know <laughs> now she's in our movie and it's like well that's kind of awesome um now do you have any i mean because i know you teach screenwriting i teach screenwriting so do you have any suggestions for writers out there that are looking to start collaborating with somebody else i actually collaborate currently you know i write my own stuff and i also have two collaborators I, you know i collaborate with greg and i yeah. collaborate with a writer named uh, joshua share who wrote um here and there the thing is i always look at strengths and weaknesses yeah okay and, like if your venn diagram needs to overlap a lot in the sense that, you know, the strengths that both my different writing partners bring, in a, in a different, and, and they both function in different ways, but I have attention deficit disorder. So my mind is bung, 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 bung. Okay. Both of them focus me on the problem. Oh, Our writing good. styles are very similar. We'll argue over words and our initial, like whether it's Greg's initial pass or my initial pass or Josh's initial pass, it's like, they're very, they're very different. We have very different minds, but all of us agree on the nature of efficiency because screenplays must be efficient. Yeah. We do not have the luxury of a novelist of, you can't waste time. 
we can't waste time. And it's not that you can't find poetry, but you're going to find poetry in a short number of words. Yeah. Because we share the same aesthetic. Yeah. We're able to argue without ego. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Cause it's, and, cause there's a shared vision there. Well, Philip, I wanted to say thank you again for being on the show. Absolutely. You're awesome. Oh, no, no, you, no, you are. <laughs> you are awesome, Jeffrey. That, that's the only reason why I wanted you on the show is just to, so somebody could tell me I was awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I know you've got a second edition in the works, so I'm, I I'm do. looking forward to that. I have been, I've been writing like crazy and I melted my brain. So now we are, we are finishing up the, the second edition. I'm going to get notes on it and uh, get it out to the editor, but I will give you a sneak peek is that I have an entire new chapter dedicated to television. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share in your social media where you can tag us at the successful screenwriter.